Celestial Pearl Daniels are awesome little fishes that work great for planted tanks like this one that I have over here. But sometimes finding tank banks for them can be difficult. So today I want to share with you guys five fish that I'm currently keeping with them right now. And then sort of go through a general framework and mindset, I guess you would say, of how I go about deciding whether or not a fish would be good for my Celestial Pearl Daniels or any fishes that I keep in general. I also have an entire playlist dedicated to Celestial Pearl Daniels I'll leave linked in the description below and at the end for you guys to check out if you guys want to learn more about some Celestial Pearl Daniels. Hey guys, it's Andrew with the Aquarium Library. Today we're just going to get right into the overview of how I decide what fish I want to keep with my CPDs. So the first thing that I take into mind is the size of the fish's mouth, not necessarily the size of the actual fish because that isn't as big of a deal as is the actual size of the mouth. Because the larger the size the mouth of the fish, the more likely it is to be able to eat a smaller Celestial Pearl Dania. So if you take a small two inch bass that has a very large mouth but a relatively small body, I'd be more apprehensive to keep a Celestial Pearl Dania in with that fish than I would with say a five inch rainbow fish that has a very large body but a very small mouth. So that the gape or the size of the mouth is what we are concerned with mostly. The second thing that we're gonna be thinking about is the aggression level of the fish and where that fish lives. So I'm probably going to stay away from a lot of cichlids due to this fact. A, because a lot of them are large and could fit it easily inside of his mouth. And B, because Celestial Prodania is like going in and amongst the plants and being around the mid to bottom range. So if you have a Pistos or Rams or a Caras, the smaller cichlids that you think of, I feel as though that would be problematic. So I'm going to stick away from those guys due to their aggression levels as well as most cichlids because of their size level. The next thing that we want to think about is the actual feeding habits of the fish. For instance, some of the fish on here that I'm going to mention are very aggressive feeders. And you need to compensate for that if you want to keep those fish with Celestial Prodanios because CPDs are a slower eating fish. They go around and sort of nibble and they aren't super aggressive like some of the Danios, Tetras, Rasboras that we also commonly keep with them. So in those situations, you want to see whether or not you can either A, feed more or B, try to find another fish that would be more conducive to a CPD's eating habits if that's your main fish in your tank. And the, uh, the last thing that we need to talk about a general review is the temperature of the fish because you might have this great fish that is perfect for it but the temperature ranges might not line up because I have found that my CPDs are best between 68 to 73, 74 and above that they start getting a little a little more finicky because they aren't used to that warm of temperatures for prolonged periods of time. So my hope is that with all those general considerations that you'll be able to make an informed decision about what fish you can keep with your CPDs and not rely upon somebody else like me to tell you what fish may or may not work. Granted, you might also want to ask some other people that have experience with CPDs, particularly people local to you, but hopefully that gives you a framework of how I decided what fish I'm currently keeping with my CPDs currently. So let's get into that right now. Harlequin Rasboras. Those are actually the first fish that I started keeping with my CPDs when I first got them. There was Harlequin Rasboras and CPDs, and they have done phenomenally well. The fish get along very well. I haven't had any issues with aggression or fin picking or nipping or anything like that. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, the only thing you need to be worried about is the feeding habits of the rasboras. The rasboras will come up to the surface and attack the surface and eat the food. Whereas the CPDs will sort of sit around in the middle water column and potentially if they get brave enough will come up to the surface, but will get food as it's falling down in the tank rather than going up to it. So just something to keep in mind, but Harlequin rasboras are a great fish to keep with the CPDs. As well as providing some more colors that the CPDs don't necessarily have in the silvers and the blues so you have some contrast in your planted tank. Kyathith Daniel Orange Stripe were actually some of the first fish that I wanted to keep with my CPDs but I had such a difficult time finding them. I think that they work perfectly with them especially if you're trying to go for a certain aesthetic and matching the CPDs colors. The Kyathith Danios have a very similar color to the CPDs and you have an orange body with speckling and other colors mixed into it and for me who's colorblind it looks really good maybe for you who's not colorblind it might be a, a little bit of a different appearance, but for me, I love the look of them. And any other Danios like that would also be a good fit. Like the Firing Danios, or even Zebra Danios, all of them. They're all more or less the same fish with just different color patterns. Again, with the Rasboras, with these Danios, you also have to be worried about feeding patterns and that the Danios will come up to the surface. Whereas the CPDs are going to be, again, in that mid-ground, so you have to feed a little bit heavier in order to potentially get that food to the CPDs in order for them to you know, survive in your tanks, which is... Well, you're probably going to want to try to do with CPDs. Super Red Plecos continue with that red theme that we have with the CPDs and Kai the Danios. They are a great fish for the bottom of the tank. They're not necessarily just a cleaner fish. They are just a very aesthetically pleasing fish that matches that red aesthetic that we're going for, at least that I was going for with my CPDs. You can also look at some other different types of bristlenose plecos. I personally really like the blue flash and citrus. It's a less commonly known pleco out there, and it's a beautiful fish that I think would, again, 
if you don't want something that matches the CPDs, this would contrast very well against the CPDs. Or you could go with your typical albino or brown or things of that nature and they'd be great for CPDs. Cherry red shrimp or neocaridina shrimp are another great option to keep with CPDs. If you are trying to stick with the color theme of the reds and oranges, you could go with a red or orange neocaridina shrimp. Or if you want to contrast that, you could go with a black or blue or green or brown shrimp that would contrast the CPDs. I actually have a whole video talking about how well I think CPDs and shrimp go along. So if you want a little bit more in-depth analysis on that, I'll leave a video up here for you guys as well as a link in the description. The short of it is they work, but they also kind of don't work. So I'll leave you with that. Elisoma gilberti or the Gulf Coast Pygmy Sunfish is an amazing fish and a fish that would go great with CPDs, but I think also rivals CPDs in terms of their beauty, especially in a planted tank. The Elisoma gilberti is a beautiful black and blue fish for the males and a little less colorful female fish that's silvers and browns and some blues with some speckling on it. But they are all around just beautiful fish that I think contrasts perfectly with CPDs. They particularly like Elisoma gerbochi, that is, particularly like a planted tank, which CPDs also like, and they like being inside of the plants, moving about, weaving about, and displaying and flaring for the females, and just are absolutely beautiful. As I mentioned, the females, you probably do want to keep some females if you are keeping the Elisoma gerbochi because the males are not going to display and flare as much if there aren't any females in the tank. Just as with rainbow fish, they have that same problem. If you don't have any females, the males aren't going to be as active and as beautiful. So with all those fish listed off, we have fish in the top water, we have fish in the mid water, and we have fish on the bottom and shrimp on the bottom. So you have a very complete and full setup that would look beautiful when you are looking at it. A lot of intrigue and depth because you might think that you saw everything, but as you start looking more, there's more things to see. So if you want to see more about my CPDs and all that I'm doing with them, I'll leave a playlist about everything that I have of them up here. I hope you guys have a blessed day. See you guys.